St. James Missionary Baptist Church of Rocky Mount, North Carolina. I'm Dr. James T. Worthy, the senior pastor of the St. James Church, and we are certainly honored and privileged that you've taken this time to share our television ministry with us. I want to take you now into a service that was previously recorded right here in the sanctuary of the St. James Church, and I pray that what you are about to see and hear will be a source of strength and a source of empowerment for your spiritual walk with the Lord. 
Without any further ado, let's go right into today's broadcast. Nehemiah chapter 2, beginning at verse 15. Are you there? Watch the word of the Lord. Then went I up in the night by the brook and viewed the wall and turned back and entered by the gate of the valley and so returned. And the rulers knew not whither I went or what I did. Neither had I as yet told it to the Jews, nor to the priest, nor to the nobles, nor to the rulers, nor to the rest that did the work. Then said I unto them, ye see the distress that we are in, how Jerusalem lieth waste, and the gates thereof are burned with fire. Come, and let us build up the wall of Jerusalem, that we be no more a reproach. Then I told them of the hand of my God, which was good upon me, as also the king's words that he had spoken unto me. And they said, let us rise up and build. So they strengthened their hands for this good work. Watch this. But when Sanballat the Horonite and Tobiah the servant, the Ammonite, and Geshem the Arabian heard it, they laughed us to scorn and despised us and said, what is this thing that ye do? Will ye rebel against the king? Verse 20, then answered I unto them and said unto them, the God of heaven, hmm, he will prosper us. Therefore, we his servants will arise and build, but ye have no portion nor right nor memorial uh -huh. in Jerusalem. Stopping at verse 20, that is what your Bible says, isn't it? Yes. I would, as you take your seats, you touch two or three people and just tell them, just do it. 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 And I'm not talking about Nike either. Just do it. I want to talk to some people today who, as we come to the end of the month of January, now realize and know a few things. The first thing that you do realize and you do know is after this walk with Nehemiah thus far, you already know and understand that first of all, there is still power in prayer. Yes. 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 That truthfully, having a conversation with the Lord, as the old song says, just a little talk with Jesus truly does make everything all right. That's, that's number one. The second thing that I would hope we understand is that grace and mercy is a wonderful thing to have in your life. But the favor of God is something worth celebrating. Amen, somebody. Amen. That is to say that I have what I have and I have come where I've come because of God's grace and God's mercy. Truthfully, your grace and mercy has brought me through. I'm living this moment because of you. I want to thank him and praise him too. Your grace and mercy. Have I got some help here? Yeah, we understand what grace and mercy is. We understand that grace being God's unmerited, undeserved favor on my life. That's grace. That's that's grace. Mercy is compassionate pity, which simply says he looked past how bad I am and he is still good to me. I wish I had at least 50 folk who testify right there that despite how bad you've been in your life and don't sit here and act like you were wrapped in swaddling clothes and laid in a manger. No matter how bad you've been in your life, is there anybody who can testify that God has been good to you? I don't deserve it. I am so unworthy, but he blessed me in a way. So for that reason, I realize that I'm operating in grace and mercy, but I also understand that there's something greater than grace and mercy. God help me right there. If grace and mercy looks this good, I wonder how it would feel to walk in favor. And can I help somebody real quick who has not been here this month? Can I just help somebody and tell them what favor is? Favor is this thing that truthfully, granted, you don't deserve it. Granted, you're not even qualified for it. Granted, some folk would say you're not supposed to have it. But by the grace and the mercy of God and the goodness of God, he looks past everything and says, I'm going to give it to him anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fa favor is one of those that gives you jobs that you know you're not qualified for. 
Favor is that thing that'll put you in a house that you don't have the mortgage for, but somehow the mortgage gets paid. Favor is that thing that when your credit can't get it, your money is funny and your change is strange. Somehow he allows you to pick up and put a 30-day tag on a car you don't even deserve. And I got somebody in St. James who will holler at me for about five seconds who can say, even though the doctor wrote me off, I'm still here. Even though folks said I wouldn't make it, I'm still here. Even though situations said I wasn't good enough, God looked beyond my mess and gave me a miracle. That's faith. I wish I had 20 people to look at somebody and tell them favor, 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 favor. Favor will put you in the place of people that, that you know you're not even qualified to stand before. Favor will put you in the presence of people who you're wondering, how did I even get hooked up with this crowd? Favor will have you standing in the White House while you're living in the poor house. Favor! Something powerful about the favor of God. Grace and mercy is one thing, but favor is another. The third thing that I hope that we have understood so far is simply this. Granted, we have God's favor. Granted, we walk in grace and mercy. Granted, there is power in prayer. But I am also real enough to understand that even when I would do good, uh -huh. yeah. evil is always somewhere present. Is there anybody in here in St. James this morning that will testify that even though you try to live right, you try to walk right, you try to treat folk right, you try to pray for folk, there is always one individual that's going to test your relationship. Lord, I wish I had 200 folk that would just be honest up in here. I mean, I'm trying to stay saved, but they make me cuss. Y'all ain't saying nothing. I, I'm trying to stay saved, Deacon Dancy, but they make me all make me want to whip their behind sometimes. I'm trying to stay saved, and if it ain't for my prayer life, some folk would have got a piece of my natural mind because I'd have went up one side of them and down the other. I wish I had some real Christians up in here who realize you ain't all the way there yet, but you so bad you got some keeping power in the Holy Ghost that allows you to say I know that I can make it I know that I can stand no matter what may come my way guess what my life is still in am I doing okay so far well y'all sit down let's walk the text let's walk the text let's walk the text because uh, y'all trying to make me preach hard and I got another round to go y'all have mercy on pastor today but uh, let's just be honest let's just be honest I'm in a mindset that since I know that there is power in prayer and since I understand that grace and mercy is available to me and that the favor of God is present on my life, since I understand already and I have a realization already that I'm going to encounter some opposition, then today I've come with a mindset that since I know all of that is there, I can't let those sorts of things that come my way kill what God has designed and called me to do. Amen, somebody. If you have an assignment from God, you don't let little simple stuff kill your assignment. When you know that God has called you to something, you don't let foolishness kill the call. Come on. When you know that God saved you for a reason and delivered you for a purpose and brought you out only to bring you in, you don't let little simple stuff stand in the way of what God has called you to do. See, I need to talk to some folk who let little hardship stop your praise. I, I want to talk to some people who allow little simple things to kill your worship. I want to talk to some folk who allow a couple of raindrops to kill the sunshine of your day. Let me help you real quick. Let me tell you, the Bible says that if you're going to live godly, you're going to face some persecution. You ought to look at somebody and tell them you're going to go through something. You're going to, yes you are, you're going to go through. Please look at somebody and tell them, just, just be honest, you're going to go through something something yeah you don't deal with some stuff but here's reality the reality is even though I'm going through it doesn't mean I'm going to stay there huh? yeah in other words if I'm going through 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 uh, it lets me know that I'm coming out 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 you ought to look at somebody and tell them I'm going through right now huh? but this is just a bus stop on the road trip to destiny huh? because I heard they that wait upon the Lord uh, shall renew their strength they'll mount up with wings like eagles they'll run my God I feel like preaching in here they'll run and they won't get weary they'll walk and they won't faint yeah I got to go through David said even though I go through the valley of the shadow of death I don't fear no evil for the Lord is with me his rod and his staff they comfort me 
me. I'm going through, baby, but I'm not going to let what I'm going through uh, kill where I'm trying to get to. Uh, because when this is over, uh, when this nightmare is ended, uh, when this trouble is over, watch me come out of that thing uh, with my hands up. As a matter of fact, can I help about six foot real quick? If you'll learn how to lift your hands while you're going through, it's going to be easy to get them up when you get out of it. I, I wish I had somebody who will be honest enough to admit, yeah, I'm going through. I, I'm going through right now. I, but I've learned how to tell God, thank him. I, going through what I got to go through. I, because when I come out of it, I'm going to tell the devil, you messed up. I, and let me get So we see in the text, we see in the text, y'all got about 12 minutes, that's all I need. We see in the text, we see in the text here, at this point of the text, Nehemiah's role has shifted. For the last few weeks, we've been talking about Nehemiah. We've been talking about Nehemiah as the cupbearer to King Artaxerxes. But at the point of the text, I do hope you understand that he is no longer the cupbearer. At this point, he has been promoted, watch this, from cupbearer to governor. How you do that unless God's favor is on your life? How does God bring you from the bottom all the way up here? Ah, y'all ain't talking. How does God bring you from next to nothing to almost everything? It's got to be God's favor at this point of the text. Here he is as the governor, one of the governors of Jerusalem with orders from the king and blessing from the king to go to Jerusalem and rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. The text gives me to know that at this point of the text, he has gone. He has arrived in Jerusalem. He is now walking through Jerusalem and he sees the ruin that is in Jerusalem. The walls are torn down. The gates have been burned up. This place looks messed up. It is tore up, as the young folks say, from the floor up. It is just really in a bad condition. He goes through. He surveys it. He looks at it. And he comes to the point of our text where at the point of our text, after seeing all the ruins, Ruin that is in Jerusalem he calls a conference meeting he meets with the saints of Jerusalem and he talks with Jerusalem and it is at that point the conversation between Nehemiah and Jerusalem that I would share with us today as I talk with us today that if you know you've got God's favor if you know grace and mercy is on your life if you know that there is power in prayer and you are already aware that there are going to be some devils and demons on your track this is the moment that you look past all of the trouble all the trials stand in God's favor and let's get it done. I've stopped here today to talk to some folks in St. James at 527 East Thomas Street in Rocky Mount on the Edgecombe County side of the state of North Carolina. I've talked, I've come here today to talk to some people to simply tell you now is your moment to no longer sit still. Yeah. Now is your moment to no longer let your assignment lay in waste. Now is your moment to let your relationship with God shine to the point that you say I've got to move from where I am to where God wants me to be. I, I, I realize right now that uh, even though I am where I am, I know that there's got to be more than this. And I need to talk to some visionary folks. Have I got some folk with some kind of vision who realize I'm thankful for what I have, but at this point, I am not satisfied. Did y'all catch it? Did you catch it? I'm thankful, but I'm not satisfied. Now that sounds a little arrogant, but that's real. Because let me be honest with you, beloveds, if you ever get satisfied you're in a dangerous predicament can I talk to somebody right here and as a matter of fact I'll go so far as to tell you Reverend Washington that's the problem with the church the church in 2016 has become satisfied yes we have gotten to a place that we're grateful to have a big beautiful building but what good is a big beautiful building with empty seats y'all ain't saying nothing God help me preach right here we have become satisfied with wonderful music but what good is music if there's no anointing can I preach like I feel it we have come and satisfied to the point that as long as we can get one good shout in we've had church. Well my God since when was a worship encounter equivalent to a shout the last time I checked the Bible said, the Bible says that when the Lord is in his holy temple, let all the earth keep silent ah, before him. That simply says that it's not always about the shout. Can I let y'all in a little secret demon shout Devils shout, 
whoremonger will shout, hypocrite shout, but it takes a relationship with God to say I'm broke as a joke, tore up from the flow up, I don't know how I'm going to make it, but I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. I wish I had somebody in here who can say I'm sick, but I'm glad to be here. I'm tired, but I'm glad to be here. I'm in trouble, but I'm glad to be here. My heart is broken, but I'm glad to be here because you just stepped in the Holy Ghost Hospital where you can get your treatment to move on for a little while longer. Yeah, look at somebody and tell them, I'm glad I'm here. I'm glad I'm here. Look at somebody who's going to talk back to you. That one roll their eyes at you. Look at somebody and talk to them. Tell them, I'm glad to be here. I'm glad to be here. As a matter of fact, I need to stop and tell somebody, if they roll their eyes at you, move your seat. That's what you need to do. Because at this point, God help me preach. I don't need no demonic distraction. I don't need no devilish destruction sitting next to me and I'm trying to get my breakthrough. As a matter of fact, let the demons get out of here. How do we run them out of here? Can I help somebody? You run them out of here by sending up a praise. Because the Bible says demons tremble choir at the sounding of the name of Jesus. And I wish I had somebody in St. James that'll take about 20 12 seconds uh, and just call his name. Uh, scare a fool out of the devil uh, and let him know this is holy. So I'm helping somebody. So, so we see here that he has the conference. He meets with the folk. And there are three things here that I want to show us Real quick, that now that you know you got God's favor, now that you know that you're going to have opposition, and now that you know that there's power in prayer, there are three things that I need to tell you if you're going to do it. Y'all ready? Here's the first thing. If you're going to do it, just do it, first of all, with an honest description. All right. Look at somebody and tell them, just be honest, just be honest, just be honest. I'm right there in the text, verse 17. Verse 17 of the text, Nehemiah says to them, look, you see the distress. You see how Jerusalem looks. You see that Jerusalem, look right there, verse 17. It lieth waste. It is burned with fire. In other words, Nehemiah didn't sugarcoat the thing. He put it right in their face. And told them straight up, look, y'all, we in a bad fix. And I think it's the right time right now that we start saying that if we're really going to do it according to the glory and the honor of God, the first thing you got to do is be honest with yourself. That's right. yeah. Why y'all looking at me like that? Right. In other words, if you jacked up, just say. Jacked up. I mean, I don't understand, Chris. I don't understand why church folk want to come to church and act like they got it all together. When the reality is, even though you look good, you're not as good as you look. Oh, I know some of y'all got offended. I know you did. I know you got offended. So let me stop talking about you and talk about me. Yeah, I look good. Yes, I do. But I got issues. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Yeah, I look good, but I got problems. Yeah, I look good, but I'm not all the way there yet. Yeah, I look good, but can I tell you, I'm a sinner that's saved by grace. Yes, I, I'm not all the way there yet. As a matter of fact, I got some problems. Me and God are still working out. But I got good news for somebody. Every time I approach the throne of grace, that man meets me with my problems and meets me with my issues and meets me with my mistakes and look past all all of that and say let me love on you anyway I, I wish I had somebody in this house this morning who realized yeah I got problems where y'all at where the, where the real Christians that'll be honest to admit I got some problems uh, but flip the script I got problems but I know the problem solver uh, oh my god in here uh, anybody want to be honest yeah I got some issues uh, but flip the script I already know the one who made the issue uh, and has got the power to bring me up out of it and I got at least five folk in here who will testify I'm up in the middle of a storm. Where y'all let in here? Well, I got somebody in the middle of the storm. Let me tell you, I know a God that'll wake up in the bottom of a ship 
and come out of the bottom of the ship and step to the bow of your life and say peace be still and the storm that's raging will get away from I gotta be honest, I gotta be honest. I'm gonna do it, be honest, be honest. But then secondly, y'all, if I'm gonna do it, secondly, not only must I have an honest description, but secondly, just do it with high determination. Yes. Now y'all, I'm still right there in the text because in verse 18, after he told them what Jerusalem looked like, in that brief moment, Nehemiah took their eyes off Jerusalem and put their eyes on the one who created Jerusalem. Look right there at verse 18. Verse 18, Nehemiah said, then after I told them how bad it was, look at this, I told them of the hand of my God, which was good on me. Well, Did y'all catch it? Uh -huh. no, no matter how bad the issue, God was still good. Well, beloved, as you can see, we are certainly out of time, but we are not out of message. As we come to the close of this another Great Awakenings broadcast, it is my prayer that your life has been blessed, that it has been impacted, and it has been inspired by today's broadcast. I'd like to say good morning to all of our watchers and our viewers, especially those in the Hunter Hill Nursing Home and all of our nursing home, convalescent homes and hospitals across the area. Our prayers are always with you that God will continue to bless and strengthen you. Come share with us right here at the St. James Missionary Baptist Church. St. James is located 527 East Thomas Street, just off of Raleigh Boulevard in the city of Rocky Mount. Join us for Sunday school each Sunday morning at 9.45 a.m. Our Sunday morning worship celebration begins at 11 o'clock a.m. Come gain knowledge of the Word of God by joining us for Bible study on Tuesday evenings at 6.30 p.m. or on Thursday mornings at 11.30 a.m. If you're unable to join us on Bible studies on Tuesday night, we are so excited to also announce that our Bible studies are also aired live via conference call on Tuesday evenings. The conference call information is located at the bottom of the screen. All you'll have to do is call that number, enter that access code, and you will be able to hear our Bible study live on Tuesday nights. If you need transportation and would like to come join us, our transportation ministry stands ready to assist you in making sure that you arrive to St. James Church on time and in time for worship on Sunday. If today's service has been a blessing to you, the service in its entirety is available on audio CD as well as video DVD. All you'll have to do is contact our church office at 252-442-2318 and the phone will lead you directly into our media outreach department and they will assist you in securing your copy for your continued inspiration and blessing by the word. As we come to the end of this television broadcast, I want to personally say thank you for your support as well as for taking the time for tune in to the Great Awakenings television broadcast. And I look forward to having you back with us on next Saturday for another opportunity in the word of God. Until our next television broadcast, may the blessings of the Lord be with you now and always.